Roger Federer and Petra Kvitova continue their Australian Open campaigns as we approach Week 2 of the Australian Open. Roger Federer, at Australian Open, Twitter, by Matthew Merrill in the halves of the singles draws that play on Sunday, 49 major singles titles are represented by the players that remain. Day 7 features a nice mix of new faces making big waves, veterans looking to recapture past glory, and two leading contenders for the title of GOAT. The round of 16 begins today, which is when the draw really takes a definitive shape, and favorites become more apparent. With temperatures due to remain cool, we should be in for some more tremendous tennis. Roger Federer, 3, versus Stefano C.C. Biz, 14, it's the first official meeting between the 37-year-old all-time great, and the flashy 20-year-old newcomer, though they didn't officially play a few weeks ago at the Hoffman Cup, with Rizzer prevailing in two tiebreakers. Federer has looked exceptionally sharp in his first three rounds this week, having yet to drop a set and having only been broken once. Mary Carrillo on Tennis Channel in the U.S. suggested Federer's current level is more like his superb form of 2017, rather than his slightly lesser form of 2018. Tsitsipas is the first seeded player Roger will encounter, and it should be a lot of fun to see this clash of generations on Rod Laver Arena. Tsitsipas needed four sets to win each of his first three rounds, and has spent almost three more hours than Federer on court. Taking out the 20-time major champion in the best-of-five format is a lot to ask of Tsitsipas, in only his second time in the fourth round of a major, but I'm curious to see how he accounts himself in this occasion. Rafael Nadal, 2, versus Tomas Burdick Rafael Nadal, at Australian Open, Twitter, Nadal holds a 19-4 record over Burdick, and has won an astounding 18 of their last 19 matches. However, Tomas' sole victory in the past 12 years came at this tournament four years ago, when he won a straight set quarterfinal. The courts in Melbourne are even faster now than in 2015, which should play to Burdich's advantage, though many have said Rod Laver Arena plays a bit slower this year. These two also met here in 2012, a quarterfinal match which Nadal took in four sets, of course their most notable match is the 2010 Wimbledon final, Burdich's only major final, which Nadal won in straight sets. Much like Federer two years ago, Burdich arrived in Melbourne after an extended injury layoff looking healthy and refreshed. And he loves playing at the Australian Open, where he's 7-0 the last seven times he's advanced to the round of 16. Toss has already taken out two top 20 seeds during this fortnight, in Kyle Edmund and Diego Schwartzman. The problem for Burdick is Nadal has also looked really good coming off his own injury layoff, with a new service motion, Nadal has only dropped serve twice to this stage. As well as Burdick has been playing in 2018, Nadal remains the favorite. But if Rafa is going to contend for this title, it's crucial to avoid extended matches. Four or five set affairs could aggravate Nadal's knees, and Burdick is fully capable of making this a long battle. Ashley Barty, 15, versus Maria Sharapova, 30, Maria Sharapova, at Australian Open, Twitter, the Australian number one already has seven match wins in her home country this year, going back to last week in Sydney when she lost a stellar final to Petra Kvitova in a third set tiebreak. Barty has won all six sets she's played this week, and has matched her best result at a major by reaching the fourth round, which she also did at last year's US Open, this will be the biggest match in the career of the athletic yet reserved Australian. Is she ready to overcome against the fierceness of the five-time major champion? This week in Melbourne, Sharapova has played some of the best tennis since her return to the sport almost two years ago. Her three-set win over the defending champion, Caroline Wozniacki, was especially impressive on Friday. In recent years though, Sharapova has often struggled to follow up such victories. The only previous time these two stepped onto the court was last year on the clay of Rome, a match Sharapova took in three sets. As talented a ball striker as Barty is, I'm not convinced she's ready to overcome the will of Sharapova. 
With speculation she may soon call it a career due to her lack of success, Maria will be keen to prove she's still a contender to compete for major titles. It feels like she's due for a run into the second week at a slam, and I would not be surprised if Barty is a bit overwhelmed by the occasion. Petra Vitova, 8 vs. Amanda Anisimova Petra Kvitova, at Australian Open, Twitter, Wow, how impressive was Anisimova in her shellacking of the Red Hot Arena Sabalenka on Friday? The 17-year-old has everything, power, speed, finesse, and composure. Now that everyone is talking about her as not just a future major champion, but a contender for this title, will she remain composed under the weight of new expectations? Well, she'll find reassurance in her 1-0 career head-to-head -head against the 8th seed. It was Anisimova's straight set victory over Kavitova at Indian Wells last year that first put the tennis world on notice, much like her previous round with Sabalenka. This match will be almost all offense, from two of the WTA's biggest sluggers. Kavitova comes into this match on an eight match win streak, fresh off her title last week in Sydney. That run also saw Kavitova defeat Sabalenka, as well as Kerber and Barty. Kavitova has only twice advanced farther than the fourth round in her last 16 majors, though Anisimova had never won a match at a slam prior to this week. I have no idea who will prevail here, but I can't wait to see how this plays out. Marin Cilic, 6, vs Roberto Bautista Gut, 22, Marin Cilic, at Australian Open, Twitter, Cilic is fortunate to find himself back in the round of 16 in Melbourne. He was down two match points in his last match but luckily he was facing a player who is even more prone to choking leads away than he is, that being Fernando Verdasco, his opponent today has been anything but a choke artist. Bautista Gut already has two five-set wins in this tournament, including his dramatic match on day one against Andy Murray. Roberto also impressively defeated the 10th seed, Karen Kachanov, in straight sets. Just like Kavitova, Bautista Gut is on an eight-match win streak. He started 2019 by taking the title in Doha, which included a massive win over the world number one, Novak Djokovic. Cilic is 4-1 lifetime against Bautista Gut, though Roberto's only victory also came in their only meeting at the Australian Open. The 30-year-old Spaniard prevailed in straight sets here three years ago. As tight as Cilic has played in pressure situations of late, I think Friday's comeback win over Verdasco will free him up a bit. And Bautista Gut will surely be feeling nerves considering he is 0-9 at this stage of Grand Slam events, having never been to a major quarterfinal. Is Roberto ready to finally break through? The winner here will play the winner of Federer, Sisip is on Tuesday. Other notable matches on Day 7, Angelique Kerber, 2, vs. Danielle Collins, who had never won a match at a major prior to this week. Sloane Stevens, 5, vs. Anastasia Pavlyuchenkova, Grigor Dimitrov, 20, with Andre Agassi in his coaching box, versus 20-year-old Francis Tfo, in his first major round of 16. Former world number one player and 2016 US Open finalist Karolina Pliskova came through a tough three-set match against 27th seed Camilla Giorgi by the scoreline of 6-4-3-6-6-2 after 2 hours and 11 minutes. Georgie converted all her three break points and stayed neck on neck with Pliskova until the end of the match but the Czech player converted five of her 16 break points to advance to the second week in Melbourne for the third year in a row. Pliskova has extended her winning record in her six head-to-head -head matches against Georgie to 5-2-1. Pliskova has won her third three-set match against her Italian rival following wins in the 2014 Linz final and in the 2017 Cincinnati third-round match. Georgie went down 0-40 in the fifth game to face three break points. The Italian player saved the first break point with her second serve but Pliskova got her only break of the first set on her second chance to take a 3-2 lead when Georgie made a double fault. Pliskova did not face any break points in her next service games and held her serve at 15 to clinch the first set 6-4. Georgie won 12 of the first 15 points to build up a 2-0 lead with a break in the second game. 
she held her service games at love for 3-0. Pliskova broke back in the fifth game when a volley to claw her way back to 2-3. Georgie got another break in the sixth game at deuce for 4-2 and saved two breakback points at deuce in a nine-minute game. Pliskova converted her third breakpoint chance at deuce. Georgie came back from 15 to 40 down by winning four consecutive games to break serve for 5 to 3 to earn her chance to serve for the set. Georgie closed out the second set 6 to 3 on her third set point at deuce after saving another break point. The first three games of the decisive set went on serve before Georgie saved three break points at 1 to 2. Pliskova converted her fourth break point after six deuces. Pliskova dropped four points on serve in the decider and sealed the win 6-3 on her fourth match point with her double break in the eighth game, when Georgie sent her forehand long. It's giving me special confidence. If you are winning matches, it does not matter how you win, just that you are winning those matches, close matches. It's not always going to be like 6-1, 6-2. Some players are difficult for me. Sometimes I just have ups and downs, said Pliskova. Pliskova's next rival in the fourth round is two-time Grand Slam champion Garbine Muguruza, who recovered from her late-night match against Johanna Kanta to beat Swiss player Taima Baksinski 7-6, 7-5, 6-2 after 1 hour and 54 minutes. Garbine Muguruza advanced to the fourth round at the Australian Open for the fourth time in her career. She achieved the best best result of her career in 2017 when she qualified for the quarter-final after two fourth-round appearances in 2014 and 2015. Muguruza and Baksinski met for the sixth time in their careers. The Spaniard scored the first of her four consecutive wins over the Lausanne player with her 6-4-3-6-6-0 win in the third round at 2015 Roland Garros. Baksinski stopped the losing streak by winning her only head-to-head -head clash against Muguruza in the first round in Madrid in 2017. Muguruza showed that she had fully recovered from her match against Johanna Conta, which started at 12.30, the latest ever match, and ended at 3.12 a.m. Baksinski, who moved up from world number 745 to number 145 in just five months following hand surgery, got an early break with a half volley. Baksinski broke back at 30 in the second game. Muguruza converted her fourth break point in the fifth game to take a 3-2 lead but Baksinski pulled the break back for the second time at deuce to draw level to 4-4. Muguruza earned a set point on Baksinski's serve at 6-5 but Baksinski saved it with a backhand winner to set up a tie break. Muguruza built up a 5-2 lead in the tiebreak and wrapped up the first set with a service winner. The second set looked to be a close match after an early trade of breaks, but Muguruza broke serve in the fifth game to take a 3-2 before holding serve for 4-2 after a 3-2 sixth game. Muguruza won 8 of the final 11 points to earn 2 match points. Basinski fended off the second match point with her backhand winner, but Muguruzi sealed the win on her third chance with her backhand. She has a very unique style of game, very smart, very talented. We played four or five times already. All of matches were very difficult. I know I was going to have to fight a lot to get it. So it counts a lot, this one. After the late match against Johanna Kanta, I went back to sleep around five, so it's very messed up. I will not forget to play tennis in a few hours. I didn't play. I woke up late. I prioritized. Rest a little bit, work with my physio, just get a little bit of distance, recover for today, because I knew it was going to be a battle, said Muguruza. Alexander Zarev hopes to improve further as he gets ready for a last 16 clash with Milos Ronic. Alexander Zarev, at Australian Open, Alexander Zarev has said that he is looking to keep on improving ahead of his fourth round clash with Milos Ronic on Monday. The ATP Finals advanced to the second week of the Australian Open for the first time in his career after a 6-3, 6-3, 6-2 win over Alex Bolt.
After serving down 14 aces in his win, the German explained that he keeps looking to improve in every match, there's always things to improve. But I think I played a good match today, Zarev explained. I mean, obviously the match with Jeremy was very tough. Generally speaking, heading into the second week, I feel pretty good. The 21-year-old also had some nice words to say about his Australian opponent who he thinks has potential to rise in the rankings, yeah, top 50. I think he has a good chance. Obviously he has a lot of power. That helps, he said. You got to build around that, you got to build your game around power. He has a decent serve, very good forehand I thought. If he continues playing this way, he's hopefully going to be a very good player. In the next round Zarev will play big serving Neil Ronick after the Canadian straight sets win over Pierre Hughes Herbert. Despite Ronick's good form, the German feels relaxed about the contest, I mean, we played twice, once on clay, once or grass, which were two very different matches obviously, he's playing very well. Only lost a set to Stan in the tournament so far. It's going to be a fun match. Obviously not a lot of rallies, not a lot of long points. We'll see how it goes, should Zarev win on Monday he will match his best ever Grand Slam result, which occurred at Roland Garros last season before losing to Dominic Thiem in the quarterfinals. Milos Ronick spoke about his tricky matches so far at the Australian Open and his upcoming clash with Alexander Zarev. Milos Ronick looks in excellent form. He has beaten three difficult opponents, Nick Kyrgios, Stan Wawrinka and pierre Hugh Herbert, and will now face an even tougher fourth, Alexander Zarev, in the last 16. Although the Canadian has only dropped one set so far, he has been challenged all the way, and the main reason his matches have remained relatively short is because he has produced his best tennis at key moments. I have been pushed, Ronick said. I have been having stressful moments in matches that I've handled quite well. I think that gives me some ease going into sort of the challenges further along. The Canadian continued, I haven't had the chance to play that many matches over a long period of time now, so to have that kind of test and to do well I think is pretty good. Ronick not sure experience gives him the edge over Zarev next. Ronick faces one of the biggest challenges in tennis when he takes on the world number four. And he is not convinced by any suggestion that his past successes at Grand Slams give him an advantage. I think it's irrelevant because you don't know how those things are going to play out. That's on his end of things. I've been here quite a few times now, the start of the second week. I've got to just focus on the things I know I need to do, if any of this Grand Slam talk has any effect on him, it can creep in, but I can't impose that kind of pressure on him. I've got to use my game to put pressure on him. I don't know if the situation will get to him or not. This approach speaks volumes of Ronick's level-headed nature, as does his assessment of the dangers of relaxing during his encounter with Herbert after facing two stronger opponents before him. It was something that I was well aware of that I didn't want to let happen. He's played well this week. He beat Query first round, who is a similar player to me and he managed to fend that off. Then he played Chung in the second round, who was defending a run to the semis here, so yeah, I knew he was doing things well, he also won the first few matches in the first tournament of the year, I believe, so yeah, I knew he had been playing well over the last little while. It could have happened, but it wasn't an issue today.